FM News 101 KXL. This is Ground Zero on FM News 101 KXL. of Chiron. He provides the voice for Chiron. And uh, he's here tonight to talk to us about Robotech and several other things. I want to call in tonight. The numbers are 503-417-9595 or 1-877-733-1011. Greg, you know, I played villains. I played heroes because I do voice stuff too. What do you prefer playing? Do you play the hero or do you prefer playing Chiron? Death to all my cronians. <laughs> What does that say? <laughs> That's great. Uh, do, them, do them both. Do them all. Uh, but you have to admit that generally the bad guys are more fun. The bad guys are fun, and it's so much fun to play them. And uh, you know, and and they're so much fun to watch. And why do you think that? I mean, I I know that um, there was actually a criticism. There's a lot of criticism going around that say that kids find the villains far more fun and interesting. Is it because we like complex personalities, or why do you think yeah, villains are more fun? It's not only kids. What's that? It's not only kids. Yes, right. it is. We do, do like complex personalities, but it's not only kids that uh, respond to them. Right. Because I know, I know that the villains are far more interesting, and if I see a villain in any show, you know, I, I, I judge the show by its villain. And if the villain isn't that great, I, then the show's boring. If the villain's wonderful... and and the thing is, is that Chiron was just so evil, and, and he's so arrogant. He's so wonderful. He was a wonderful character. Don't write him off. <laughs> I don't think anybody has. <laughs> it's a, I, I just think that uh, for, you know, for the character, he's, just, uh, he's an amazing character, a good profile for um, you know, just any kind of evildoer. You look at each one, and each one has its own style. I used to be a big Ming fan for a while. Uh, loved Ming the Merciless because I, was a, I, I grew up on old sci-fi and i think that's one of the reasons why i like robotech so much because it did remind me of old sci-fi you didn't have to think through most of it because it was all shoot 'em up it was all robots it was all uh you know flying machines it was all evil and and good and uh and and the dialogue was pretty interesting too it was kind of like we also we we from the get-go and this again uh was a command uh, from carl masek he said we will not write down to our audience. We will write for intelligent people. Mm -hmm. And that may be the only time in television history that that command has ever come down. Yeah, well, it showed. I mean, that's that's why it's endured. Um, did you prefer the newer generation in Macross, or, or did you, how was the adjustment? Uh, well, they're, they're entirely different. I mean, a uh, whole different storyline. I, uh, I liked the new generation. Um, at time, I mean, we all had favorites. Uh, obviously, Chiron is mine, mm -hmm. uh, and and he is for a lot of people. Um, and a lot of the fans said, "God, Rick is such a wimp." Yeah. Well, that's get, the thing. Get, get rid of Rick, it. yeah, Lisa, and get on with your life. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and and sometimes even uh, <clears throat> even Scott Bernard. In the third generation, uh, kind of, well, he was, he was never wimpy, but he would just sort of say, oh, stop it. You kind of want to slap him a little bit. Right, right. Get on track. I think it also adds to the fact that, you know, when you look at anime, everything, everybody looks younger. 
If you're not, it, it, they all they all look younger no matter what because they draw them that way, and it's like sometimes that's why I think they they see it as wimpy or they see it as very childlike rather than the character's uh, profile and its in his personality. Part of it, part of that. Have you seen the Shadow Chronicles? No, I haven't. We look terrific. <laughs> we, I, I look fabulous. I've never looked that good in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I was, and you the know. women are all babes and built out to here, and uh, we're we're fond of that. But and there's more there's more coming up for the Channel Chronicles as well. Well, that's great. I think a lot of people will be interested in knowing that. I'm going to uh, go to some calls in a minute, but if you want to call in five zero three four one seven nine five nine five or one eight seven 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 three three one zero one one. What about the idea that uh, the newer stuff was post apocalyptic? Did that kind of take it down a notch, or do you think it still remained as as true as ever and as interesting as ever. You mean in light of what has been happening in the last 25 years? Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, we were rather prophetic in that, uh, if you want to put it that way. Well, you were. That's the thing that's interesting about the show is it was pretty prophet prophetic. And that's why, you know, when I opened the show, I was talking about, <laughs> you know, alien technologies and the idea of a 30-year war with aliens based on the fact that either, A, the, the aliens... Uh, left the ship there for the sole purpose of coming back and trying to steal it back or you know or not, or not yeah or or the idea that you know whatever the technology is there is it going to be our undoing or is it going to be for us i mean they they built their lives around that ship they're on macross yeah. they built their lives around it right they powered right. with it they did everything with it and then they said okay we're going to send it back up into space and take it on a, on a trip aliens show up and the party's over well, they, uh, they remember that we were able to um, retro-engineer only up to a point. We, it was like uh, being able to to use the ship but not really understand it. Right. And that would obviously cause a, a whole slew of problems. Mm -hmm. uh, and that uh, that's kind of a running a running problem throughout the series when you when you get into the the Haydenite technology, which we kind of understood, and they, they kind of let us have bits and pieces, and of course it was a trap, mm -hmm. uh, because the Haydenites are the, the, the evilest of the evil, exactly. and uh, there are some surprises coming up there, too, in the, uh, in the next project, one being uh, Love Live Alive, uh, which is uh, genuine, original 80s footage from Tatsunoko. Wow. That's never been seen outside of Japan. Hmm. And that will be mixed with new original footage. It's a, it's, it's a parallel story. Um, Harmony Gold's calling it a sidequel to the Shadow Chronicles. Uh, that's going to be interesting. And then there's uh, Shadow Rising, which will be the continuation of Shadow Chronicles. That's coming in the future. There's a bunch of stuff happening. Gosh, it sounds like the universe continues to grow, and, it, and it's just more fascinating stuff to to wait and 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 and, and love. And uh, let me go to a call right now. Let me go to Bernie. Yep. Bernie, hi, you're on Ground Zero with Greg Snagov. Go ahead. Hey, Clyde. Hey, Greg. How you guys doing? Good. Hi there. Hey. So my question for you is, uh, Greg, during the uh, the process of uh, the beginning of Robotech, the whole series of Macross, um, do you know why they didn't start with the battle between the Zentradi and the Masters to introduce the SDF one? Why they didn't start directly with the battle? Yeah, between the Zentradi and the, the Robotech Masters, then uh, Zor's ship ended up getting sent uh, uh, out and ended up on Earth. Do you know why they decided not to go with that, the, uh, that beginning? Was a decision, that was a decision that, that uh, Carl Masek made, um, knowing the series in the beginning better than anyone else. Uh, he felt that that worked better for the story, that's all. Oh, okay. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Thank you. All right, Bernie, you have a great day. All right, you too. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. I'm sure, you know, when you're, when you're dealing with uh, the adaptations of anything like that, that's a, that's a big thing to take on. And, and to try to have some coherency or, or, or something, it would be difficult to do, right? Yeah, well, we, in, we were so under the gun that uh, we were desperately looking for new adapters because uh, the, the three, four, five, or six of us 
that were not only writing, but most of us were directing, and, and some of us uh, were rewriting stories that were not working, scripts that were not working. And we probably ran through, I would say, at least 100 people, I mean, trying them out, giving, giving practically anybody who, who wanted to a chance to write them write the adaptations. Mm -hmm. uh, we tried published science fiction authors. We tried novelists. We tried uh, some of the top actors, the dubbing, the dubbers. Mm -hmm. And you can't say they don't see sync. And uh, we actually found one, one guy. Mm -hmm. He managed to crank out about three or four scripts and uh, disappeared. Literally disappeared. He just disappeared. Just he just stepped in, did it? Did he did he ask for any money? Did he get paid? Well, no, everybody was paid. In fact, there were people who were paid who shouldn't have been paid because their work was was not good. But mm -hmm. uh, we, it, it's just something. Not because we're geniuses or brilliant or anything like that. It's, it's something that some people are are able to do. Uh, one of the uh, one of the actors um, who is one of the top dubbers around. Uh, and a friend of mine said, oh, come on, Snake. I mean, I, I, how difficult can this be? Give me one of these things, and I'll crank one out. Mm -hmm. And I did, and two days later he called me up and he said, Greg, you are out of your mind. <laughs> how do you do this? And I don't know. We just, we, you know, we find ways to get by the tedium because it's, it is extremely tedious. I mean, you got to look at every single line of that film or right. show or whatever 10, 20, 30 times in a row until you get the sync right. The answer is always a pizza and a six pack. That's how you get through it. Yeah. Just, oh, well, well, it's just a pizza and a six pack. Got me through this script. <laughs> no, it's, there was a movie, uh, an independent film that we did called Nightfall. It was a vampire film. And yeah. the guy that played the this, that, that's why I asked you the question. If the guy got paid. The guy showed up to play the vampire, the lead vampire. We didn't know who he was. Just showed yeah. up. He was this good-looking guy with long hair. Yeah. Played our vampire and then disappeared. And we never heard from him again. In fact, we were worried that maybe he really was some sort of a goth kid or a vampire yeah. that just showed up from out of nowhere and just went back to Transylvania or wherever they hang out these days. So it was a pretty creepy thing. Uh, <laughs> so uh, more Robotech talk coming up on Ground Zero with Greg Snegoff right here talking about how the cartoon, the anime we all love, came to be. And uh, also talking about some other things, too, anything from Alien Wars to technology to all those things that are the themes of, uh, gosh, a remarkable, a remarkable series. 503-417-9595. That's 9KXL. Or one eight seven 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 three three one zero one one. That's the toll free number one eight seven 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 three three one zero one one. If you have any questions about uh, the show or anything that we've been talking about, give us a call. We'll be back with more. Keep it here on Ground Zero. Got an opinion? Call KXL now five zero three four one seven nine KXL or eight seven 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 three three one zero one one. This is Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis, weeknights at 9, only on KXL. Ground Zero with Clyde Lewis. Down on Ground Zero, we're having fun. That's right, we're kind of, uh, we're talking about alien battles, we're talking about what it's like to do a successful anime series, manga series. Of course, I'm talking about Robotech. I've got Greg uh, Snagoff with me on the show tonight. Veteran voice actor, writer, dialogue director. He's here to talk about his work on Robotech, as well as his thoughts on what's going on in the world. And, uh, you know, do you believe uh, that alien technology has been left here on this planet? I know that's you know what I mean. Uh, yeah. Is that, do you believe that, uh, that uh, we have uh, technology that's been left behind on this planet and that we have reverse engineered it, and that's why some of the things we see today, like drones and things of that nature, exist? I don't know if we've reversed. I, yeah, actually, I do. I think we have uh, reverse engineered some stuff. Uh, I think we have been given uh, other things. Mm -hmm. um, you know about the Magnocraft? No, tell me about it. Ooh, interesting. Polish researcher uh, developed what's called the the oscillatory chamber. It's one of the various forms of free energy. He built a working prototype. His next door neighbor built a working prototype. 
And uh, once he, he started studying it even more, he said, well, that's kind of interesting. Now, what happens if I put it, – it, it looks like a cube. It's got no moving parts. Right. And uh, he says, what if I have one of these things that's running and producing uh, electricity, and I put it inside 